Good morning, this is Nigel G4XFG. This is a RF remote control unit sold by Maplin Electronics in the UK. This one has developed a bit of a problem. When I press the on button, uh, you will see the LED will light up and then you'll hear the relay click off again a few seconds later. See, there it goes. Now I'm going to show you in this video how to repair that. So what has happened in this unit to stop it working, the capacitor in the capacitive dropper has in fact uh, dropped in value and deteriorated to the point where the power supply can no longer supply enough current to, um, to power the relay. The relay comes on and then drains the reservoir capacitor and because the uh, series capacitor can no longer maintain the current, the relay drops out again and the unit locks up. So all we need to do is to replace this capacitor and the unit will function once again. So to gain access to the unit, it's quite, it's quite simple. We need to prise off this outer ring. It just lifts off like that. That's gone. It's not broken, so it can go back on again. Inside the hole there are two tamper-proof screws, which we need to remove with a T15 tamper-proof screwdriver. So I'll just do that and then we'll come straight back. Brief explanation of capacitive dropper power supplies before we actually carry on with the repair. If you look at the drawing, the AC mains comes in on the left hand side and passes through a 0.47 microfarad X2 rated capacitor to provide some reactants and current limiting. It has to be an X2 rated capacitor as these are suitable for direct connection on the mains. How they work is they have a metallized, very thin film for the dielectric and if the film gets punctured by uh, a transient voltage of some kind, then the metal film evaporates on each side of the hull and uh, limits and stops the current flowing. It prevents the capacitor self-destroying. What's probably happened in our capacitor in this unit is this has occurred on several occasions and has reduced the capacity to very low levels. Once we've gone through this capacitor, we then go through a four bridge rectifier, which gives us a pulsating waveform of 350 volts. The Zener diode clips this down to 12, and this 12 volts is stored in the reservoir capacitor, which removes all the ripple. So we get a nice smooth um, 12 volts, which is um, nicely regulated. The downside is it's not um, isolated from the mains. If you touch any part of the DC output, you'll get an electric shock from it. So please don't build one of these unless you really know what you're doing. Anyway, back to the repair. Right, okay, we just need to remove the capacitor. I'll do this, apply a bit of fresh solder. That the solder sucker. And just remove the capacitor. And heat it a little bit. Come out. Excuse me a second, I'm just going to manipulate that round. That's it, she's out. Okay, that's the capacitor removed. And you can see if we look at that one, the camera's not going to focus on it. We'll have a go. 0.33 microfarad X2 rated capacitor. Then we have a replacement capacitor of the same value. Just going to put that in. The solder over the hole there. Just going to clear that. Must be an X2 rated capacitor if you attempt to repair one of these. That's the only way to guarantee it will remain safe. Get a good quality one as well, not necessarily one off of an unknown eBay supplier, just get one from a reputable supplier. Safety does depend on this capacitor. Okay, I'll just stop the video, uh, trim the leads off and rebuild it and we'll try it. 
Okay, here we are, back again. Uh, the unit's now rebuilt, screws put back in. We're now going to plug it in and give it a try. Okay, unit's in. Let's see what happens. We press the button. Unit switch is on. LED stays on. Relay stays on. Unit now repaired. Okay, it's as easy as that. Just make sure you buy the correct capacitor. This has been Nigel, G4XFG. It's been great having you here to watch my videos and catch me again soon. Bye-bye.